It's been a very, very difficult spring. It's been extremely cool. As it stands right now, we are uh, more than halfway through the spring season, and it's kind of sad because we had such a late start due to the extremely cool temperatures. We're still down in the mid 40s in the evenings here. So the spring is going by very quickly, but in the past two weeks, a miracle has happened inside Seymour Canivers Gardens. Uh, we're back for 2016, big time. Uh, the Saracenas have broken dormancy. We have absolutely gorgeous flowers coming up. The pipes are now starting to form and become turgid. So they'll very shortly begin uh, trapping their prey. It's a really, really cool process to watch these plants break dormancy, put the flowers up first. And once the flowers are pollinated, then all the pipes are coming up. And then uh, when the saltus hits again, uh, nectar production starts and then the whole feeding process starts on the plants. It's just an amazing process to watch. And there's really nothing to do here except respect the environment of how these plants grow, which is pretty much leave me alone. All right, it's, an, it's a really easy plant to deal with. The sundews like this filiformis here uh, are up and going. They're actually actively trapping right now. I did tr break out some uh, new introductions this year. Uh, I'm, I'm stepping into the world of tissue culture and not so much uh, doing rhizome divisions and things of that nature. And was able to uh, procure bug bat and uh, another uh, Saracena purpurea called Fat Chance. So it's kind of exciting to watch these plants grow because Saracena Fat Chance, I have absolutely no idea what this plant's gonna do. And it's nice. All these years later, 40 plus, that I've been playing with the plants, there's still new things going on out there. Uh, the Venus fly traps, this has been the best crop I ever had. I can't let out all my trade secrets, but I did change a couple of little growing processes. And in the 10 years plus that I have been growing these plants commercially, uh, we're dialing it in. I have some events lined up with libraries right now. Uh, they're always a lot of fun. And a couple of schools. Uh, the schools, there's been a little change in their programs. Uh, we won't get into all the details, but everything is dynamic. You guys having a good day so far? Yeah. yeah. You guys all ready for a really cool and exciting seminar on Canivorous Plants? And that's the cool thing about this business, is that there's so many avenues and so many things that you can do. Uh, if something starts to falter a little bit, there's always something else you can do. You just uh, keep an open mind and follow what people are, you know, listen and follow what people are talking about and network. Now, between now and June, are they actually producing enzymes and the liquid in there? Is there anything currently in there now? To a point. That really starts once they start trapping the insects. Uh, and also it requires moisture at the same time. And that's why um, I think carnivorous plants are a wonderful teaching tool. Well, teachers have always used plants in the classroom, but there's something about the carnivorous plants that the students are really intrigued about. They're fascinated. They're fascinated about their carnivorous mechanism, um, just the beauty of them, the way they look. They're different, and so that helps to draw them in. It's so interesting. The students come in interested. They want to know about how things work, how the world works, and um, so it, it's intriguing to them. They, they have this natural um, interest in science. I think most students do. Uh, well, I just finished a seminar over at the Brentwood Middle High School. Uh, we had 10 research students who were very interested in the Saracenas, the, uh, the pitcher plants. And it was an absolutely amazing event. Uh, great questions from the students. We had a bog garden here that was put in about two years ago. And they actually asked me to quadruple the size of it. So that's one of the reasons why I do these events is this is how I keep the business viable. Uh, everything leads into something else bigger and better. And that's the name of the game when you're growing carnivorous plants. With a little changing in my schedule, I actually spend more time here at the nursery, which is working out better because now entire families are coming in here and not just one or two people that you meet at a show or something like that. So the public awareness of these plants and of my business is growing uh, very nicely right now. By dialing it down and relaxing a little bit with it and working on different revenue streams and a way of making bog guards and things of that nature, I was able to get the, the joy of the, uh, the business back again. 
So it's really, it's very, very exciting. It's actually the 10th year of, of business. It's an anniversary for the business this year. So it's kind of cool that this whole filming is going on because it is a uh, milestone in this business right now. So uh, it's very, very interesting. And I can't wait to see what's gonna be coming my way.